This episode may contain adult themes and explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Sorry. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Film Critic and the Common Man podcast. Other film podcasts may put a quarter in their pocket, but we don't, because that just makes it a quarter, which it is. Every episode, we discuss a film from the perspective of a film critic and from the perspective of a common man. We may not agree, but it certainly will not be boring. Uh, I am your co-host, Ben Miller. I write about films from my own site, Ice Cream for Freaks, and I'm a member of the North Texas Film Critics Association, as well as the International Film Society Critics. You can hear me guest on other pods as the David Thewlis of podcasting, and I am joined by my brother, Common Man co-host, Jake Miller. Jake, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing good, bud. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, because we're about to talk about this awesome movie uh, that you picked. Um, It's going to be, it's going to be a great one. Um, it's it's one that sticks in your mind a bit. Uh, we let's just go ahead and get right into it. Uh, we are talking about No Country for Old Men, um, the 2007 film by the Cohen brothers, Joel and Ethan Cohen, directed by them, written by Joel and Ethan Cohen. It was edited by a man named Roderick James, who is uh, not a real person. That's Joel and Ethan Cohen using a pseudonym. Um, regardless uh so it's a coen brothers production all the way around also produced uh based on the book by cormac mccarthy starring josh brolin tommy lee jones and javier bardem co-starring uh woody harrelson kelly mcdonald Garrett dillahunt stephen root tess harper beth grant opened on may 19 2007 at the Cannes international film festival went wide on november 9th 2007 as well uh, $74.3 million at the domestic box office, almost $100 million international, $171 million on a $25 million budget. Very successful. Yeah, at, no uh, joke. At the time, the most successful Coen Brothers movie. Um, Rotten Tomatoes, 93% with critics, 86% audience, which I thought was surprising. I thought the audience would hate it a little more than uh, critics would. But, yeah, uh, well... I, I, I can see how it would be more critically acclaimed than maybe, uh, you know, the, well, still, still the very, audience. But still very highly rated. It's in the top uh, top 200 of IMDb movies, which is generally user rate, uh, users uh, as opposed to critics. Uh, nominated for eight Oscars, Best Picture, Best Director, Supporting Actor for Javier Bardem. Adapted Screenplay, Cinematography, Film Editing, Sound Editing, and Sound Mixing. It won four Best Picture Best Director, uh, Supporting Actor for Bardem, and Adapted Screenplay. We will get into the 2007 Oscars and everything to do with that. Jake, before we get to the plot summary, why did you pick this film? Uh, obviously, um, your, your, your travels around the, uh, the doldrums of West Texas is probably a big factor in it. Yes, uh, that some, some of the cinematography in this, in this film just perfectly portrays where it is i mean absolutely and i don't i don't think people really understand remoteness remoteness and desolation just desolation absolutely yes. yes i mean when when you stand at the top of a a hill and you look around <laughs> and there you're the only swinging dick within 100 miles <laughs> it's yeah. it's it's intimidating absolutely it, it's it's all inspiring it's yeah so uh anyways yeah just that the title says it all absolutely no country i mean that in, in my recent travels down there i found times i was like we grew up here <laughs> this is <laughs> yes for this the- is, for, this is tough for the listeners that don't know we were born in andrews texas a place you can never go unless you're intentionally trying to get there um a place that dies every couple decades uh depending on the oil boom um boom or bust yep lived in midland texas for many years until we, we were almost teenagers um so i mean we're very familiar with that area and uh now the the film portrayed in here uh so just for a little background, the film is generally 
uh, filmed around Marfa, Texas, and in Las Vegas, New Mexico. Yep. So yep. Um, around those areas, uh, the places they're portrayed are actual places, but they were not filmed there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the counties and the Eagle Pass and the things along those lines. All right. So um, No Country for Old Men, a, uh, an incredible film. Jake, why don't you give us our, uh, the plot summary? All right. I, I was trying to think of this earlier, like how to, this is a tough plot to even describe. Yeah. And it's not like, it's not I like mean, a whole lot of setup or a whole lot of stuff. It just kind of starts. Yeah. It's um, all right. Well, yeah. Like you said, it just kind of starts. Mm -hmm. um, so Josh Brolin, who I think does a freaking great job in this one. Um, he's, he's small town dude. Um, you know, they're out in the middle of nowhere living in a trailer home. Um, he's, uh, a Vietnam vet, uh, out hunting antelope one day, uh, wings one, uh, follows the blood trail out into the desert. Like I said, middle of nowhere. Uh, this is Terrell County, and, by the way. Terrell County, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, for those that don't know, Terrell County's right in the armpit of the Big Bend. Yeah, it's much. it's a fairly it's 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 a fairly not small sized county, but it's a very small population. Yeah, it's geographically very large, but I think it's like last census was like seven hundred people or something. I, th I think they said it's like the thirty seventh smallest county in the United States. Yeah, population yeah. wise. So anyway. Popu yeah very sparse yeah but anyway so he uh goes trying to track down this antelope and uh comes across this huge drug deal gone bad cartel business um bodies everywhere guns everywhere uh spent casings dead people he opens up a uh truck door find someone alive and god knows why he kind of keeps on tracking figuring out what what happened truck full of heroin by the way yeah yeah <laughs> loaded down with drugs and then he comes across more dead people and more discarded guns and stuff and so of course you just keep going uh but he finds a big ass satchel of cash so like millions of dollars probably uh, i think two million is that was the uh, on there yeah okay and uh so you kind of look around and <laughs> well only people i see around here are fucking dead <laughs> yeah so you know so yeah he takes money and runs well there's a transponder in there and i guess through you know the cartels or whatever uh there's a a hitman a sicario whatever you want to call him um who's what's his i i can and, never remember anton sugar yeah yeah uh so he's this complete sociopath killer i mean i i don't it's it's like he doesn't do it for money. We'll get it more into absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Anyway, he's an insane hitman, and so he uh, goes to try to track Llewellyn down. And by the way, if you live in West Texas and your name is Llewellyn, <laughs> you better be a tough some bitch. <laughs> I was actually thinking that at one point. I was like, <laughs> I was like, Llewellyn, that's not a name you hear much. It's like, eh, I'll bet you had, had a tough time growing up, but figured it out. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like a boy named Sue, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The names, the names in these, this movie is great. Ed, Tom, Anton, Llewellyn, uh, Carson, Carla Jean, uh, Loretta. It's, it's just, it's just name, great name after great name. Yeah. Uh, so sorry. I get, no, keep going. You're good. Uh, as Tommy Lee Jones says in this movie, sorry, my want, my mind wanders yes, sometimes. Yes. <laughs> so, but uh, 
yeah and so so this this psychopath is trying to track down josh brolin's character and obviously the money um and just murders anyone in his way almost without for any reason pretty much yep um really proves himself to be a, a crazy ass killer absolutely um then uh woody harrelson comes in uh tommy lee jones by the way uh yeah he is the sheriff of turtle county and probably the titular old man oh yeah yeah, yeah i mean yeah so I yeah mean, yeah but yeah he's i would say if anything, he's the protagonist of the story. Yes, I would say that's true, yeah. Because there's kind of anti-heroes mm -hmm. and then villains. I, I would say he's the closest thing to a protagonist uh, for this film. But so. anyways, so he's a sheriff tasked with trying to figure out, um, you know, this drug deal gone bad. He figures out Brolin took the cash and uh is in big trouble uh because people are coming to kill him and mm -hmm. so he's he's basically trying to track him down so he can save him yep um and yeah woody harrelson comes in he's like a uh, another hit it's man like a secondary bounty hunter a little uh, less less deranged yes. yes yeah more of a businessman yes yeah uh he comes in and does not last long. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I was, I, when I rewatched it, that was a big thing. It's like, boy, Woody wasn't in this very long, was he? <laughs> I know. I was like, and I love Woody Harrelson. All right. And I was like, what? Yep. <laughs> well, yeah. Adios. Yes. But anyways, um, then, okay, Tommy Lee Jones, the sheriff, kind of ends up tracking Being everything part of down. It all, yeah. And... There's a big cartel hit, and uh, Lou Ellen is killed. And then it, it, this is such an anticlimactic movie. It really is. That it is a climax. You no. know what I mean? Yeah. The, like so I, I, I mean the. I have a whole. I, I have a whole. I have a whole segment dedicated to us discussing the ending essentially after okay llewellyn let llewellyn like half flirts with that lady at the pool and from that yeah. moment until the end of the movie it's it's kind of like it changed shifted completely different on how the entire yes. film had been going so uh we will uh we'll get into that yeah so that's a lot of okay that's a lot of no country for old men i mean but when you i mean it's 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 hard to describe you it know is. i mean it's hard it's hard to run run through it and explain it to someone who's never seen it it's, it's really interesting the first uh i, I want to say the first 10 minutes of the film the first 10 minutes of the film is it's an overlay of the desolation of west texas as tommy lee jones yeah. is talking about his career as a lawman and then uh sugar I'll, gets her, sh sh yeah with the, I, the cool I love speeches. that monologue. That cool yeah. speech. All, all that cool stuff. Um, uh, then uh, Anton getting arrested. Anton uh, escaping his arrest by killing a deputy. Uh, kills a man on the side of the road with an air gun. It, extraordinarily violently. Yeah. V very quickly. And then, then all of a sudden, Llewellyn is shooting at Antelope. So, I mean, this is in the first seven minutes you're introduced to the main three characters. Generally. Yeah. Um, it's a... The, the film is kind of, it, I, I always view it as kind of a uh, perfect storm of um, where he's like, okay, the, the common man critic amalgamation between the two is like, you look at this and it's like, yeah, look at that cool, cool West Texas stuff, all the action, all the, right. all the nifty stuff. And then right. the critics can really geek out on all the existentialism. Yeah. And the, I, yeah. I think this is, this is a very, I don't know if you've read a whole lot of Cormac McCarthy or just kind of his ideal this is probably i think this is um his kind of plotting and the way he speaks and the way his it's just kind of like monologue after monologues this is the best case scenario of what he does and everything else can get kind of a kind of 
um, it kind of stretches the imagination. You're just like, okay, this is getting old, but this mm-hmm. comes together in the right, perfect way. Um, I was thinking about all the different uh, sequences, action sequences or sequences in general. You get the opening sequence with Bardem esca- escaping and the monologue. You have uh, Brolin the first time running from the cartel guys going across the river and the dog chasing after him. You have... Um, By the way, God damn, that talk dog, about commitment that, to that, your job. That dog can swim. <laughs> he said, "By God, they told me to get that guy." <laughs> well, that was, and we, I also <laughs> I, I thought about that last night. I said I would just swim to the dog and drown it. Right? Well, you know the funny wouldn't that be? Well, it's it's so goofy because we're so we're so entrenched to love dogs, and as they're going to the water, and I'm I'm looking back, I'm like, oh, look at the puppy swimming. <laughs> I know, I know, and I. <laughs> For for people who don't know us, I, I have a brand new dog that I'm <laughs> like uh yeah, I mean basically in a gay relationship <laughs> with at this Brokeback yeah, Mountain yeah. and yeah, then yeah. I mean, got a new dog. Yeah, um, it's, but so the whole time and and yeah, you yeah, I'm like, you see this, I'm like, I'm like, like sure, buddy. <laughs> it's going, it is going. It's like, yeah. And when, yeah, that's the so. true protagonist. Of the yeah, movie the, 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 the dog. That fucking pit bull. <laughs> All right. So you got the opening sequence. You got that, that chase with uh, Brolin there. Um, you have uh, a, a little, the, uh, the sequence in the first hotel where Brolin is trying to get the money out of the other uh, hotel room while, uh, Anton kills the Mexican, uh, the Mexican cartels. And then you have the... again, an extraordinarily <sighs> boom, violent. And, and, and then my personal favorite, uh, the showdown between Anton and, uh, and Llewellyn in the second hotel, whenever he shoots the lockout and they shoot back and forth and they're on the streets of Eagle yes. pass, um, yes. just sequence after sequence after sequence of tension, uh, setting, atmosphere. Yep. Um, yep. And, uh, you know, there's a, it, it's one of, of the Oscar snubs this movie kind of received. A lot of people are like, man, the where's the score? I love the score. And I was listening to the, I was watching the movie and I'm like, I'm hearing nothing but silence and terror. Like I didn't hear much score the whole time. There wasn't a yeah. whole lot of music setting. Um, so, uh, so what's your, what, uh, what is your one sequence? Like if you had had a clip on YouTube, what's the one you're going to go back to the most? All right. Well, it's a very good segue from what you just said about silence. And there's not much music. There's it, there's a silent tension and a terror unreal that I think, Like I was, I was recently thinking about the the scaredest sit, like the scaredest I've ever been. It was quiet. Yeah, you know, it's not Bing Bang Boom. You know, car wreck. It's You're just waiting for some sound. Just there, you can. Yes, yeah, goosebumps and just you know that it's it's just a tension building scene but it's in the uh texaco uh oh, yes i forgot to include that uh, yeah he uh Anton this, talking to the uh, gas station attendant this makes it for me mm. if 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 you only played that i'd say that's <laughs> that's a good move <laughs> uh but and, and obviously was, uh, you have to build the tension up there but yeah i mean uh, that that scene when you know he makes him call it <laughs> i just and i brought my quarter this quarter uh, his quarter's been traveling around the world for 22 years and it to made it to here yep. yeah i'll uh, bring that up when. so so the interesting thing about that is uh um i want to talk about bardem in general just from this movie just because i'm always fascinated and i'm really impressed by anybody who can like you see people on film do violent stuff all the time and kill people almost at will and with general psychopathic sure. stuff. I think yep. it's rare to be like, I am scared of this person, but why am I scared? Like there's no reason to be scared of a guy with a bowl cut and pale face. And he doesn't, I don't, I don't, 
he never runs. I don't think he, I don't think he ever does anything more than a trot. It's almost like a Frankenstein the whole time. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's not, he's you know, the, yeah, there's nothing he should be terrifying, but he's just so butt numbingly horrifying to watch. Yeah. He, it, it's, it's, it's almost just cringy. Like the way he responds to people and everything. It's just, Yeah. It's, it's not it's a way like a human should are, respond. Yeah. Yeah. People are like almost so uncomfortable that it's terrifying. But he uh what else is I gonna say on that? God damn it. I mean that uh, gas station clerk, he said it's like, Oh, I gotta shut down. When do you shut down? Now. Now's not a time. What's the time? It's like, oh no, these are not real human answers. Like uh, right. I, this is not He's human like, nature. Do you do you live in the house out back? <laughs> oh yes, sir, I do. <laughs> What time do you go to sleep? <laughs> exactly. That's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. About 9 30. I don't know. But something uh something I found really interesting uh after re-watching it was you saw that clerk's response, and obviously he was, you know, in sheer terror. Yeah. Later, uh when he interacts with a clerk at the I believe it's the, the trailer, trailer home. Oh, man. Yeah, the trailer park. And she just don't give a goddamn. <laughs> She's like, I am i don't care if you're going to kill me. Whatever. Right. <laughs> He's like, what trailer is he in? And she's like, I told you I can't give you no information. Well, once he hits resistance, he kind of. Okay. He's like, well. He the, shuffles the, up. The terror is not working here, so I guess I got to go. Right. He's like, if I ain't scary, then. I don't know. That's the only thing I got going for me is being scary. So how much, uh, how much experience you have with Javier Bardem as an actor in general? I mean, this is, I, I'm going to go on a limb and say, this is probably the first thing you ever saw him in. I'm, I'm sure it is. Oh, actually, no, you've seen collateral. Uh, it's probably, you didn't know it at the time. Uh, he plays, he has a little cameo in the film collateral. He is the uh, cartel boss again in the back of, uh, in the back of a club that Jamie Foxx has to go get, information on the hit list from um it's it, if you ever watch collateral again you're like i can't believe that's javier bardem it was never something you missed uh believe me believe me he's there uh mm -hmm. but uh you know he had a long he had a long uh history of uh film in spain a uh, lot of a uh, lot of stuff from there and then he was in a film called before night falls from 2000 about uh the uh, the writer Renato uh, uh, excuse me Ronaldo uh, Arenas uh, got an Oscar nomination and then kind of steps out from there Collateral a couple other films this is the one that really sent him off into the stratosphere of actually being um, doing things like the bad guy in Skyfall uh, and uh, things like that one uh, uh, in the latest Dune movie still doing and he, recently playing uh, Ricky Ricardo or excuse me Desi Arnaz uh, in being the oh, Ricardos gosh. most recently. But um, so, I mean, I, I think his general anonymity probably adds to the horror of everything you're doing. You don't have you don't have any baggage with Javier Bardem coming into this movie. Right. Yeah. It's not like you're, um, you know, your classic bad guys that are bad guys and every single, you know, they're yeah. the bad guy and die the hard. They're the bad yeah. guy. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he didn't come in with that baggage. And so you it's kind of a clean slate where yeah. I think, I think Woody Harrelson puts it perfectly right before he gets fucking smoked. <laughs> she goes, do you have any idea how crazy you are? <laughs> it really does. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a good point. And, and at the time, and he just kind of has this, and then, and of course he gives a very Anton Chigurh answer being like, his like a, uh, it's like, well, the circumstances or whatever he says, it's like, it's yeah. The nature of this, <laughs> the, the circumstances, the he goes, no, the nature of you. you. Yeah. He's like, you are batshit insane. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't, he doesn't get it. There's a, there's a disconnect. Yeah. 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 He's um, yeah. Is, he's uh, not. Yeah. Is, is Bardem your favorite performance in the film? No, I'd, I'd have to go with Tommy Lee Jones. You go with Tommy Lee Jones. Okay, I'm glad we're, on, the, we're on the same page. Now, now I, I do think Bardem's the best, but I think Tommy Lee Jones is a close second. Um, not, not, to, not to detach from, uh, not to, not to uh, distract from Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin's yeah, character excellent. is just, 
he's he, he's supposed to be a story everyone was everybody nobody's bad and, and i got a little yeah. i got a little small uh thing uh actually let's go ahead and do that now we can we can come back to it i have a uh i have a little thing i have a i, I want to give you a couple nominees for the best small performance random small performance from this movie yeah okay so we have uh we have seven nominees okay. uh gene jones who plays the gas station clerk the terrified gas station clerk uh, okay. Kath, Kathy Lampkin, the trailer park lady who doesn't take okay. any Anton shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Garrett Dillahunt, um, he plays Deputy Wendell. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Hilarious. Uh, um, by the way, uh, went, uh, uh, screen tested five times. He, he was in a lot of stuff. He screen tested. Justified? Uh, yes. He's been in okay. a lot of things. Garrett Dillahunt is one of those guys who are like, I've seen him in everything. Uh, screen tested five times for the role of Llewellyn and lost to uh, Josh Brolin. Uh, he's a good Wendell, though. He's a great Wendell. Um, Stephen Root, the executive in the office, uh, who is eventually uh, murdered. Oh, shot. Uh, shot. Shot in the face, yes. Shot with the old suppressed shotgun. Yes. Uh, Beth Grant, playing Carla Jean's mother. Uh, I pre-visioned it. <laughs> that was, and again, hilarious. Like, I yeah. can't find my prednisone, man. Everything she said was hilarious. <laughs> um, and whoop, which is, you know how many people I know in El Paso, Texas? <laughs> Zero. That's how many. It's, stra- it's strange to see a Mexican in a suit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing she well, says is not gold. Um, the, uh, the El Paso sheriff, uh, played by Roger Boyce, uh, mm-hmm. has a nice mustache and then a big... Uh, and then uh, Barry Corbin, the old Catman Ellis. Uh, Barry Corbin, a, a, a longtime character, character actor in Lonesome Dove and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Ellis, the uh, his, um, Tommy Lee Jones' uncle, he goes to visit near the end. Yes. Uh, yes. So. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, so, that's so they're all good. They're nothing. And, and by the way, I, I didn't mention the, uh, the random boot store guy about and it's like yeah. people come in here with a people come in here in bathrobes often no sir it's unusual <laughs> it's unusual <laughs> i mean but this... but the guy walks in half naked but wearing boots he goes how them larry's holding up <laughs> <laughs> this he's is... like oh good i just need everything else <laughs> As, this, so this yes movie, sir? Let, let's let's not de- let, no denying this movie is incredibly violent and and mm-hmm. visceral and action-packed yes but the more you think about it, the more hilarious it is. Like, there's it's, a lot of funny lines in it. <laughs> it's it's a it, it's a uh, a dark humor that yeah, kind of just lies under the surface. Yeah, and it's it's not super obvious. It, yeah, <laughs> it just sits there, and it it just is what it is. And it's, <laughs> uh, you know, I I, I saw something else. Um, made me think of actually broke back mountain too was i heard this described as a neo western yes that's a good way to and put it because you don't really I, think of it as a western but it just happens to be the setting yeah 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 and and i thought man almost if you have a western it almost don't matter what it's about i i probably like it probably yeah. i i like westerns but yeah um yeah it's a it's a very funny movie and and uh, I mean, and it's not just it's not just all these small performances either. You know, Woody Harrelson asking if they validate parking and uh, uh, Josh just Brolin. being a smartass <laughs> right up smart to the answer. end. Uh, Carla Jean, uh, Carla Jean, uh, Llewellyn's wife. It's like keep talking. I'm gonna go in there and screw you. It's like empty promises yeah. and just. <laughs> okay, so I have to I have to bring up something. Okay, uh, a point a point that my wife actually made okay uh, when we watched this uh again last night was lou ellen's wife what's what's the actress's name kelly mcdonald okay uh my wife said all she does is ask scared questions <laughs> the whole movie go back and watch her entire performance lou ellen, ellen, what are you doing what are you doing <laughs> How, is what's that a piss what'd you give for that what and like that's that story all she, true it's it's yeah that's all she great. does I, I think kelly mcdonald's great in this film it's, yeah. yeah no but but she's yeah she is very great uh <laughs> in that but my wife did bring up a good point and once she brought my mind to it i was like 
She only asked <laughs> frightened questions. <laughs> It's not the much, whole movie, not a whole lot of characterization, but very true to life. Like if you're in this situation, it's like, well, I'm just keep asking scared questions. Like, why am I, I'm not going to get involved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, that, yeah, that okay. was a good performance as well. Okay. Uh, so this is, this will, this will be a nice little uh, segue into this. I want to play a little game from you game with you about the five main characters in this film. It is called, are they from Texas? We okay. are going to start with the, with the five major characters. Starting off, let's start with the easy one. Is Tommy Lee? Uh, so we're gonna. So you get a point for the correct answer, and you okay. get. A, and if they are not from Texas, you get a correct point for telling me where they're from. Um, okay. We're gonna start. Are they from Texas, Mister Tommy Lee Jones? I'm. Yes. I'm he gonna is. say yes. He was. Uh, he's from. Uh, He's from Del Sur, Texas. He uh, lived in Midland for a okay. little while. Uh, went f- yep. went yes. to uh, went to elementary school with my second grade teacher. I think I just remember this from being being a second grader. All right. Uh, All right. Up next, Javier Bardem. Is he from Texas? No, Spain. Spain. Correct. Correct and correct. Well done. Two for two. All right. Josh Brolin. Is he? From Texas. No. California. Correct, correct again. Very, very well Woo! done. Okay. Number four. Woody Harrelson. Is he from Texas? Oh shit. Yes. Correct. From Midland, Texas as well. Um, fun fact. <laughs> fun. Fun fact before we get to the last one. What? Um, in, in, oh, so they picked the, great people for it. The book in this movie, the book this movie is based on, uh, Ed Tom Bell, the character, the sheriff says at one point, and he's like, these people are doing crazy stuff. They killed that judge. They killed that judge a while ago in 1979. That judge was killed in 1979. I forget the name of the judge, but he was killed by a man named Russell Harrelson, better mm-hmm. known as the father of, of Woody Harrelson. Oh. <laughs> Woody Harrelson's father was a contract killer who killed the judge in 1979. So um, really a uh, nice simpatico between these wow. two things. I mean, okay. Our last one, the most exciting. Kelly McDonald. Is she from Texas? I'm going to... Her, her performance is uber convincing super convincing uh but i'm gonna say no and i bet a quarter she's english she is not from texas she is from glasgow scotland Ah, so close (laughs) she is So, uh, so the I, best, I just had a feeling, and you, uh, the you have probably seen her most famous role outside of this. Actually, you haven't seen it, you've heard it. She is the voice of Merida from Brave, the Scottish princess Merida, archer princess. That is Kelly McDonald. She has an incredible Scottish brogue, and the entire time I'm watching this movie, I'm like, man, she is nailing this accent. <laughs> the- Golly. It is, yeah, if you, if you ever I, I mean, hear it, it's undeniable. But it's, I mean, to go to go from a Scottish accent to I, can, I cannot being, imagine how long she worked on being it. someone, uh, you know, convincingly from Odessa, Texas. Oh, unreal! It's it's really impressive. That's I mean, that is because that uh, is. I mean, even everybody else, uh, at least she's the only non-American in the cast. Everybody else is at least. Uh, I, I checked a couple others. Uh, Garrett Dillahunt is from uh, from California as well, despite his very uh, impressive accent. Um, yeah. Tess Harper, who plays uh, Tommy Lee Jones's wife, she's from uh, Mammoth Spring, Arkansas, so makes sense. Uh, Beth mm-hmm. Grant, Beth Grant, and her incredible accent. Um, she's from Gadsden, Alabama. So I mean, at least they're all Southern. Adjacent. <laughs> yeah. So I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I mean. It, that was a that was fun. It was it was, the entire idea was just to be like I want to see if he knows that Kelly McDonald is from Scotland. So, so yeah. very well, well done. You, you had I mean you got every correct every answer correct and you got every setting correct except for in England Scotland's close. So I mean, hey, 
it's United it's, Kingdom. It's pretty close. Yeah, pretty good. Right. Pretty good. Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That that the the accents spot on were nailed nailed by everyone, including yeah. including now Tommy Lee Jones being from Texas. He is a classically trained actor. I believe he went to Harvard and like a very intelligent guy has been not has been working in Hollywood for years and years. And if you see other movies with Tommy Lee Jones does not talk like this in this movie. He talks right. He, he, he adds it up an, an extra notch. Uh, I think it, at the beginning in his opening monologue, he said uh, kilt, uh, kilt a girl when she was 14, killed a 14 year old girl. girl. Kilt a, 14. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. so, I mean, um, Tommy Lee Jones is one of those guys, whenever I think, you know, a, a lot of people, whenever they kind of think of Texas-based actors, you know, kind of the mm -hmm. Matthew McConaughey, the good old boy, kind of like swinging, haha, <laughs> Matthew McConaughey types. I always think yeah. of Tommy Lee Jones, the no-nonsense, suffers no fools. Right, yeah. Just, he, he ain't going to put up with your shit. That, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, John Wayne types, even yes. though John Wayne was Cal from California, California. Yeah, I was say. <laughs> so, or maybe his well he wasn't from Texas I know that not. but but yeah his uh Tommy Lee Jones draw in that is mournful almost and I mean it's it it just sounds like sage wisdom yes it's, and he just and he, he almost talks in riddles it's just like Kilt that steer, come to hit it, kill can lift this, you know, all that just kind of yeah, like everything grand, he says, you're hanging on a word, you're hanging on every word. Yep. And he uh that opening monologue mm -hmm. uh reminded me of one of my very best friends I've ever had. Uh but he says, uh, my grandfather was a law man, my dad too. And yeah, I had a good buddy that uh he'd call it a law man. <laughs> and and his his daddy was a law man you know yeah uh so yeah just that good old country boy draw and not it doesn't mention, mean they're dumb no not at they, all i mean he's a very that might intelligent sound, guy it. yeah i mean and, it, and and you know you think you look at it on paper on paper between the sheriff and deputy wendell wendell is probably the smarter guy on paper like yeah uh, like test taking probably but, yeah. But the entire time, it seems like everything Deputy Wendell does is kind of, uh, 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 you know, kind of like an idiot. <laughs> he's not. Yeah. He doesn't do anything stupid. It's just kind of like you were, You don't really know what's happening. And he's. Yeah. It, it, the, the really interesting part about the movie and just kind of the idea of everything that's happening is that opening monologue where he talks about other sheriffs not not carrying guns. Yeah. Like. And and even yeah. think, and even I think they're going into Llewellyn's trailer and Deputy Wendell pulls his gun out and he's like, "You gonna pull your gun out?" I was like, "I'm right behind you. It's fine." Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm right behind you. Yeah, yeah. gun so up it, and out. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a um, measure. I like Wendell. Wend Wendell is great. Wendell just I, I almost feel bad because I've, 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 I've <laughs> you know just the dumbass kind of new guys like along for the ride. I mean, well intentioned do anything in the world my my, my kinda, favorite my favorite kind of doesn't know my shit. favorite running gag is that it's like da guys are gonna go out in the scene again you want to go with them and he's like no it's like i've seen it it's like he said the new the, are the new bodies out there no it's like no i'm good, good. like i don't really need yeah like he, and then he, at one point his secretary <laughs> comes in and secretary comes in and he said the dea asked if you wanted to go out there he said well that was cordial of him <laughs> Just <laughs> it's like I want no, nothing to do with them feds. And, and, not, and not to mention everything, every the more information that Ed Tom gets in the movie, the less he is happy about it. He's just like, I'm gonna do my job. I'm not gonna say no to doing it, but it's like at the same time, I don't understand this. Um yeah. especially especially whenever Deputy Wendell comes in and tells him about the 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 man who shot in the head, the air gun. He said, mm -hmm. suppose he goes in there and dugs around with a pocket knife. And then he just kind of yeah. pushes his breakfast away. And Ugh. I think, yeah. I think that's overall more than anything else. That's the thing about the movie that really stuck with me. It's people who are trying to live in a world, trying to comprehend a world yes. and the other people in the world that are shaping it without caring to comprehend it. And those mm -hmm. two sides fighting against each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and I think that's the reason I uh, would choose Tommy Lee Jones as my favorite performance. Um, you know, I can identify with him a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's he's got some great quotes. You know, I always always like to hear about the old timers. You know, when he's talking about the guys that didn't even carry a gun. I used, um, I used every opportunity I could. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, he's talking about, you know, some of the horrific things. And it, he goes, I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's just, uh, in, in the monologue, he's almost going like, I don't know if I'm cut out for this shit no, anymore. No. He's like, I don't. I don't think I want to be a part of this. Um, and I mean, he says, I always knew you had to be, be willing to die to do this job. It's not that I'm afraid of it, but I don't want to push my chips farther and go out and meet something I don't understand. And by the way, whenever he says those exact words, <laughs> the deputy is loading in Anton's air canister. Like, it's like I don't understand this. This is this is beyond reckon. This is beyond understanding. So I mean, it's it's yeah. not a, not a coincidence. Yeah, it's foreshadowing. Yeah, really, yeah. It's like this is this is some fucking weird. <laughs> okay, um, a couple a couple small things about this movie. Um, uh, some small things I found in the research. Uh, the three main characters never actually interact in real. Never share a scene. Ed Tom. Who's that? The, the three main characters, Ed Tom, Llewellyn, and, uh, and Anton never are actually on screen together. They have interactions either on the phone or they'll be like uh, whenever Llewellyn and, and Anton are shooting each other, but it's always in reflection. They're never in the same shot. Uh, that, be, that being said, huh. that being said, Carla Jean is the only one that interacts with all three. Um, uh, so uh, Javier Bardem, uh, hmm. whenever he came in for a screen <laughs> test... Whenever he came for a screen test, uh, the Coen brothers gave him a wig and gave him that Bob wig. And he looked at me and said, <laughs> said, said I'm not, he said, I'm not going to get laid for a month. And they both high -fived, they high fived each other. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they said exactly as creepy as they wanted to. Um, one of the things, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's so good. He looks <laughs> like a fucking psychopath. <laughs> um, the, the quote that, uh, that, uh, Javier Bardem had about this movie um, whenever he got offered it. The Coen brothers came to him and said three things. I don't drive. I speak ad bad English and I abhor violence. And they all, and they both went, that's sweet. We got perfect. You. It's exactly what they wanted. And so um, they, uh, yeah, he, his, he had some scheduling conflicts. They had another guy on standby, but uh, he got the, got a resolve and took the role and uh, won the Oscar. Um, and he's he's to me he's like Kathy Bates is to misery yep. is being real good at being fucking insane basically. Yep. Yep. And okay, I guess this is a this is a good time as any. Let's talk about this ending. So not not necessarily ending <laughs> probably the next the last twenty minutes. Uh, yeah. So. So the entire time we're always in, we're invested in Moss and everything that's going on. And the entire time we're like, is he going to get away with it? How's it going to happen? And then he dies off screen. Um, he dies off yes. screen. Uh, Anton goes and apparently gets the money. Ed Tom can't find anything. He decides to retire. Uh, Ed Tom is contemplate is trying to figure out what to do with the rest of his life. Anton goes and, I presume assumed to kill Carla Jean. Uh, it's, it's implied. Um, but I think so. Yeah. So kills Carla Jean, but on the way from leaving gets in a car wreck, a uh, terrible compound fracture in his arm. Just, just, out and, of and just randomly, randomly. Not, it, it ain't a hit nope. or anything. It just car accident. Yeah. And, and I was watching with my wife and she goes, did he have a green light? He didn't do anything wrong like right yeah the, i'm like the, is the, it? the other guy ran that light. <laughs> yeah so, doesn't do don't worry else. about the contract killings <laughs> he, he, he didn't run a red light though so it's okay do not give that guy a ticket <laughs> uh, no no fault for him uh don't put the insurance claim in no so he, yeah compound Good fracture idea. in his arm uh still uh, asks uh, you know pays for a kid's shirt walks off into the sunset and he ne never seen again 
And then that's it. And then uh, Tommy Lee Jones talking to his wife, telling her about a dream he had about his dad. Cut yep. to black. It's yep. It's uh, you know, as as little plot as this movie has, it, it's not a coincidence. It probably doesn't have much of an ending. What do you take out of the end of it? Yeah, I'd love it. I do um, too. It's. I mean, I have seen, uh, you know, movies that have ended abruptly where I'm like, oh, thanks for nothing. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, this one works. Yes, it does. But and I would describe the ending as nihilistic almost. It's a good way to put it. I would say that the ending uh, feels nihilistic to me in that, you know, Josh Brolin's dead. You know, his wife's likely dead. This psychopath is banged up and just Free. walks, walks off. Nothing, you know. And there's a old washed up sheriff that Sad. finally hung up, hung up the badge and doesn't know what to do with himself. And, you know, it's just everyone's just, well, that, there, there, there's no, there's no catharsis. That was that. There's no catharsis. I mean, nope. It's like, oh, well, well, uh, so, so there's a, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. There's a thing in the, uh, there's a moral code before predating the MPAA rating system, the film ratings like R, PG 13. It was called the Hayes Code. The Hayes Code had very strict rules started in like 1937 and ran all the way till the 60s. So they had very strict rules about uh, morality and things like that, including bad guys. So essentially, bad guys could never get away with it. They weren't allowed to ever get hmm. away with it they always had to have some sort of consequence even even there had to who, be a justice yes there had to be yeah. some justice so this movie in this this ending would have never worked because anton walks off i mean he does have a compound fracture in his arm um but i mean he as, doesn't as, care he does he does not <laughs> care that's a great point he doesn't care because he, he gets shot and doctors himself in a hotel room with shit he jacked from a, a pharmacy and, when and he that, blew up a car out I front mean, of it. In specifically, he, he doesn't give a shit. Just think about that actual process. It's like, okay, I'm going to steal from a pharmacy. I'm not going to wait in the middle of the night, break in and do whatever. It's easier to That's blow silly. up a car in broad daylight and mm -hmm. go back there in broad daylight, get all the stuff I need and go. That makes more sense to him. So why yeah. would why would anything else why would a compound fracture of your arm make any sort of difference? Um, right. It, yeah. Also, uh, one I of, think one of my yeah. favorite. By the way, one a quick favorite line of the movie is whenever they you know they wrap it up and uh, one of the kids actually played by Caleb Landry Jones. If you ever see him, in a, he's a very oh specific actor. You see him in a bunch of other stuff. Uh, is he the kid with the shirt? The other kid actually. Um, oh, okay. He's the one with the line because he says, uh, he's like, look at that, look at that fucking bone. Like, just, <laughs> just look so... at that fucking bone. <laughs> uh, Mystery, you got a bone sticking out of your arm. <laughs> uh, Caleb Landed Drones is from Texas as well, by the way. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's just one of those things like his arm sticking out, there's no consequences. He's off to the distance. It's like, well, what happens next? It's like, doesn't matter what happens next. He's the personification of evil. And it's in the world. And no matter what happens, no matter what circumstances, yeah. run a red light and try to stop it. It's going to still be there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And man, that that character is so complex because even though he's so messed up and mm. twisted and psychopathic, why did he feel the need to pay the kid for his <laughs> shirt? He's like, sir, I don't need to change your shirt. He's like, uh, it's like, oh, it's like okay. Mister, I give you my shirt. Yeah. He's like, no, take it. And <laughs> you didn't see me. I mean, I get he's paying them off for that too, but like he he almost, and I think Woody Harrelson says something about it. Like he he has principles. Like he has, he has, he has principles. Has, yeah. <laughs> there's it don't make no fucking sense, but <laughs> in his mind, there's a reason for what he's doing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So all right i think now's the now's the right time it's for time for the world's favorite segment it's poll for a dumbass and we are going to lead it directly into uh for the third straight week we're going to do the directors uh the cohen brothers um mm. cohen brothers have had a long and hit long and uh storied history um they have 
been making films together since 1984. They recently actually, uh, I don't know if broke up is the right word, but uh, most recently, uh, Joel Cohen, uh, Joel and Ethan Cohen, Joel uh, made a movie by himself. Ethan's about to make a movie by himself separate. But uh, we will go through the Cohen Brothers movies um, for the time being and see how many of these you have seen. I think it's going to be a little more than you expect. All right, starting in 1984, an exceptional debut, uh, the debut of also Francis McDormand, who is married to Joel Cohen. Uh, oh. Blood Simple. No. No. Okay. Never mind. That's uh, not, not surprising. Uh, 1987, their big uh, commercial breakthrough, uh, the Nicolas Cage starring Raising Arizona. I have seen it, been a long time, been a long time. and uh, apparently it didn't have a big impact on it's, me. It's, it's wacky, it's wacky fun. Um, I know I've seen it, Stealing but babies. I don't. Um, my, awesome. my personal favorite Coen Brothers movie, even more so than No Country for Old Men, Miller's Crossing in 1990. It's a, uh, it's a Prohibition era gangster movie um, starring Gabriel Byrne, Albert Finney, uh, John Turturro exceptional I like Albert movie. Finney. it's an exceptional uh, movie um and miller's crossing i've never even heard of this oh you, it's, it's it's our last name i'm sorry it's it's how did it, been? it it's a top i'm sorry it's a top 10 movie of all time for me i think the first you, time we ever saw it i think we're in it, we saw it oh no i don't know if you did but it's something it's, whenever we lived overseas you'd always get random movies and i think that's might have been the first time i ever saw it hmm. um their big critical breakthrough, 1991. There is no chance in hell you've seen this one. Barton Fink with John Turturro and John Goodman. I love that one. You're lying. I am. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. 1994, uh, their attempt to get more mainstream, uh, a, uh, a spectacular failure with Paul Newman and Tim Robbins, the Hudsucker proxy about the guy who invents the hula hoop. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Can't. I can't believe that that sucker didn't take off. Actually, I mean, I, I really enjoyed uh, it. <laughs> I really enjoyed but it, actually. It's like it's Paul Newman. <laughs> it can't yeah, be that bad. It's, it's a, I, I really enjoyed it. Okay, so this is whenever they really started to get famous. Uh, 1996 is Fargo. Yeah, that's whenever you mention uh, McDermott. That's the, that's the that's, first one you always think of, yes. That's a banger. That's a banger. Uh, it's Man. a lot of different, lot of different storylines coming in a lot of different places. Uh, Francis very, si very, very similar, similar really. Yeah. Uh, just in a different type of desolation. Absolutely. Desolation, Snowy just the desolation same. Or hot desolation. Yes, that's but, a good point. That's a nice little parallel. Yeah. Between the two. Interesting. Um, yeah, that was their big breakthrough. Uh, McDormand got her first Oscar for that. And then it started to get to a point where people started to be much more recognition of them. Uh, 1998 is the big Lebowski. Oh yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah. Um, That's a good one. Enhance my love for uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Uh, 2000s, a movie I have definitely seen with you. Oh brother, where art thou? Oh man. And that's, and yeah, that's, that's a big one for me. Yeah, I love Brother Art, that was fantastic. I think so too. Um, the next year, uh, yeah, off chance you might have seen it, might have gotten a little more indie. The Black and White, The Man Who Wasn't There with Billy Bob Thornton. Nope. Oh, that, that's, uh, I'm not too surprised. Um, okay, now we get into a stretch of their least popular movies. Uh, the George Clooney starring Intolerable Cruelty. No. George Clooney and uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. Um, it's a romantic comedy, not very well received. Uh, okay, your favorite Coen Brother movie, 2004's The Lady Killers. Uh, that was. <laughs> I have. Um, I need to go to therapy for sitting through that movie. And that that thing was shit. It was I. I agree. It's um, of the of the of the Coen Brother movies I've seen. That's uh, definitely the worst. Um, that, I mean, that <laughs> just makes a man not want to be here anymore. Two thousand seven's No Country for Old Men, followed by two thousand eight's Burn After Reading, star-studded uh, again George Clooney, Francis McDormand, Brad Pitt in a highly comedic role. Um, a lot of different stuff going on in there. I'm not sure you've seen Burn After Reading. Was there a book first? Nope. Nope. Uh, it is uh, John Malkovich is in it. It's a madcap caper about CIA stuff. Mm -hmm. and, no. Okay. Um, That's a good one. If you get the chance. 
Um, another you one. Say I, burn after reading. Burn after reading. You got to write that one down. That's right. It's it's a it's a it's a fun watch. A lot of lot of hijinks. Um, 2009's A Serious Man. Um, mm-hmm. Probably their most, probably one of their more spiritual movies. Uh, very uh, 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 entrenched in Judaism. Uh, got a uh, got a best picture nomination. Um, not my favorite. Uh, one of more overrated in my opinion. Uh, another one you've seen, 2010's True Grit. I watched that in a motel room in Kansas like <laughs> two days ago. Three or well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. Um, they're, uh, they're, uh, so great. That, is, that is their most financially successful, uh, after, uh, no country for old men, um, 2013's inside Lewin Davis, uh, big breakthrough for, uh, Oscar Isaac. It's about folk singers. No, thanks. No, didn't think so. Okay. Uh, 2016, another Josh Brolin starring one hail Caesar about the Hollywood, Hollywood movies. Hail Caesar. No. Okay. Uh, the, now we got, only have two more, uh, 2018's, <laughs> uh, this is a Netflix film. A Western, uh, but a um, uh, split into segments. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. No, I, I think I've heard of that. It's, it sounds it's familiar, but I, some, I, I definitely haven't seen it. There's some good parts. There's one with, there's a segment with Tom Waits of a guy searching for gold that's really good. There's mm-hmm. uh, um, a lot of different ones like that. And then uh, then last year's, uh, the one, the Joel Cohen, not the, uh, not the Ethan Cohen, uh, they remade Macbeth, the tragedy of Macbeth with Denzel Washington. Hmm. it's pretty exceptional i thought is it shakespeare's i mean it either lands or it flops i mean it's it's, to me it's it's extreme it's really fascinating because with shakespeare um it's it's a it's the it's a very minimalist setting like uh, the settings are like the castles are very uh empty um and there are some english actors doing english accents but Denzel Washington isn't. Francis McDormand playing Lady Macbeth isn't, but they're speaking exactly like they do in the in the book. Denzel Washington speaking Shakespeare is not something you didn't think you needed in life until you see it. You're like, that is really good. Um, hmm. He's really exceptional at it. He has actually Shakespearean trained. So I mean, um, yeah, that's 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 both. I might have dumbass. checked that out. That's not bad. You so you got raising Arizona. You're probably going to end up watching Miller's Crossing. Seen Fargo. Seen yeah. a Big Lebowski. Oh brother, where art thou? Um, Love of the Lady Killers, No Country for Old Men, True Grit, uh, and uh, that's not bad. Uh, they 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 kind of kind of go in between between kind of their like indie stuff and yeah. more mainstream things. Yeah, yeah, they they have an interesting lineup in it. Uh, yeah, I, I you know I like their dark, dramatic, dark humor type stuff. You know, I mean, yeah. Uh, Fargo and No Country for Old Men are more similar than I think I thought about before. Yeah, that's interesting. That's, I, th- I think Fargo is much more comedic, while No, no Country is much more dramatic. But you see all the comedy in No Country, and you see the violence in Fargo on both cases. Yes. Um, yeah. They're uh, yeah. the pair have won uh, four Oscars. Um, both, both, uh, both won best picture for this film, uh, both rest one best director for this film, both won adapted screenplay for this film. Um, and then they also, uh, won, uh, best writing for Fargo back in 96. Uh, they have been nominated for quite a few. They're one of, I think six pairs of people to be nominated for four Oscars in the same year. Uh, they didn't win for editing, but I think that the editing in this film is pretty spectacular. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it, it moves really nice. Yeah. Especially considering they, I mean, change scenes kind yeah, of and, and all abruptly. Linear, all but, linear, never goes back and forth. It's all, yeah, pretty straightforward. Yeah. 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 It, it, I mean, it glides together, I guess. I agree. In a smooth way. Yeah. I agree. All right, Jake. I think that's it for me. What do you have for me? Ben, you're in the hot box. Okay. I'm in the hot box. What do you got for me this week? After all right, uh, uh, I, I'm uh, hopefully less uh, less pants pooping. Oh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, all right. Well, as you know, you have to answer honestly, and you're not free to leave until you've answered all these I'm questions. I'm here. I'm here. All right. Yes, sir. So they might be uh, personal or movie related. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite salad dressing? 
Um, my go-to is honey mustard, actually. Uh, you know, long time, long time ranch as a kid, eventually you grow. You're like, yeah, I can't mm-hmm. have ranch the rest of my life. Honey mustard's probably the go-to. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I like I like a solid honey mustard. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Whenever Josh Brolin discovers the uh, massacre mm. and he opens the one truck and finds a guy still alive, what does that guy ask for? He asks for water, which actually kicks off the entire plot because he goes home with the money. And if he doesn't have a conscience and go back and give the water, yep. the movie yep. doesn't really happen. Um, but yeah, he asked for uh, asked for water. Um, yeah, I'll go. Now yeah. the funny thing is out there, we you know, whenever we were watching, we we're like, you're in the middle of the desert hunting antelope, and you don't bring water, like right? You don't. You ain't... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good setting? way to die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, whatever, but okay. Yeah, I mean, I go out there in a air conditioned <laughs> truck, and I have if i have a jug yeah like exactly. yep i mean that's a good point though I, I can tell you you break down out there You're some in trouble you ain't got no cell service you it it's a good way to get fucked i mean absolutely right there on the side of the road you can fucking die yeah i'm absolutely. i'm telling you it's it's that remote it's and very desolate. desolate i agree i agree Yep. Yeah. So, uh, so poor planning on poor water planning on his part. Yeah. He needs to work on his hydration. <laughs> that was, that's my main critique. <laughs> okay. What you got next? Oh, sorry. I forgot. You're still in the hot box. <laughs> All right. What, what year and what year does this take place? I believe the, the, the setting. The said, I believe it is 1980 because it says, uh, and this, how do you know that? Because this quarter was 1958 and has been traveling for 22 years to get to this point. Very nice. Uh, yes. Um, now very good detective work. The interesting part about 1980, it's not too, you know, there's nothing that necessarily makes it 1980. There's nothing that makes it like it, it's, it's not a, it, yeah. it's, it's 1980 lost was in just. Time. Just kind of there. And not to mention these cities are kind these cities and these towns and counties are kind of lost to time anyway. Um, oh yeah. I mean, so, Oh, absolutely. So, so these, these places in 1955 <laughs> and these places in 1980 aren't going to look too terribly different. It's not like you're, it's not like you're going to turn nope. a corner and there's going to be a McDonald's there. Now the nope. reason I you, could, I could take a camera with me right now and, and yes. pretty much, I mean, old vehicles, even absolutely. older vehicles. Yeah. I mean, it's, that movie, yeah, 1980 yeah. to now, not really that different. Really lost in time. I agree. Okay. Yeah, so uh, 1980, yeah. All right. So very good. Um, what's the most you ever lost in a coin toss? A literal or metaphor? A literal or a, uh, a 50-50? Like a literal coin toss or like a 50-50 chance? Cause like, you know, you play like roulette and you put it on red and you lose black, maybe, maybe a hundred bucks, but on an actual coin toss, I probably lost, you know, Oh, I, you know, you get to go first for, for something silly, something arbitrary. Uh, I can't remember any sort of actual stakes of having anything with a coin toss. Hmm. Um, probably it's probably Interesting. just, it's probably just as simple as like, um who gets the last beer tails ah heads okay you get it something or you get right. the last cake or cookie all right so steak dinner <laughs> okay. steak dinner loaded baked potato okay all the fixings all the draft beer you want okay okay what's your wait hold on what uh how long has this uh coin been traveling around the world uh no this one i this is a 22 <laughs> i have a 2019 nickel i was thinking it's like oh is this old no okay 22 okay okay but so so 84 so, percent of u.s currency was has been produced in the like the past 24 months or really? something anyways okay so are, are you are you are you pulling this like a like an anton where you catch it where you catch it flip it and that's where it is 
catch flip is that yes okay yeah okay i'll call it in the okay. air yes so this is like a nice ass dinner okay okay i'm ready i'm ready call it tail <laughs> Hang on just a sec. <laughs> I refuse to edit this out. This is gold. Uh... <laughs> Let's try. All right. I lost it. <laughs> okay, I got, I got a coin. If you got uh, 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 same same thing works for you. I got a I got a I got a 2015 nickel. Um, okay. <laughs> I'll let you call it. Ready? All right. Heads. Tails. All right. Dinner's on me next time. All right. Good. Lord. All right. That was, that was glorious. That, that was stupid. <laughs> um, okay. Um, what's your favorite color? Um, you know, you could, you, I could go into a long diatribe about how I'm an adult and adults shouldn't have favorite colors because who cares in the world, but I'm gonna go with blue. All right. <laughs> I think, see, you, you were the Leonardo fan. I was, I was. You? See, this is how there I, you always, go. I always associate this. It's like, yep. Uh, the Christmas yep. presents we got were, mine were always blue. Yours were generally red or yep. maybe green sometimes. Uh, yeah, our other brothers were some yeah. reason yellow for some reason sometimes. Orange or yeah, yeah. always kind of the odd ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, um all right. So all right, final question, and then I'll let you out of the hot okay. box. Okay. Maybe. Uh would you have taken the money? So, so I, that's a, it's a great question. Um, you also got to think of it in the terms of Llewellyn and his circumstances. I mean, mm -hmm. he's a, he's a vet. Not well off. He's not well off. He's living in a trailer park, but doesn't exactly seem like they need for much. Um, yeah. Trying to shoot antelope seems like a, a former welder. I don't know, but uh, yes, wife works at Walmart. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of those things where you can't take money and be have the conscience to want to give the guy the water. You can't you either you either take the money completely mm -hmm. and realize he's going to die or mm -hmm. you leave the money and, or or take a or you know it, it's it, you, you can't So so you're you saying he, he half-assed it basically yeah, you can't you be wishy-washy on your conscience yeah you either need to go full badass or yeah full good guy exactly exactly and and that's essentially what led to his downfall i mean so um yeah uh his situation i wouldn't surprise me for that taking means... the money but um, the water is where it kind of where i'm like okay he's the guy is gut shot like it's it's the it's and the... i would have searched the money for a you know, GPS or something. I, I you know, I would have, yeah. And, and, you know, that's, that's actually an interesting aspect of it though, because, uh, you know, as we were saying, the eighties, the you got a fly flying around you. Um, the eighties uh, the, the are kind of, uh, uh, you know, these cities are stuck in time. And the thing that actually brings everything down is actually the little piece of technology. And it, mm -hmm. even as, as analog and arbitrary as it would be yeah. today, it's still, that's the, <laughs> that's the thing that makes it kind of go from there. Yeah, I mean it's a it's I mean, cell phones have been the downfall of how many people you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, technology is used against people all the time now, and yeah, that's a good point. That's kind of a, a little bit ahead of its time, uh, but it's also funny uh, when me and my wife were watching this the other night. He's uh, riding around with that transponder. Mm -hmm. And it's beep, 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 beep. And it just goes on forever. And we, at one point, just look <laughs> at each other and go like, God damn, that goes on long enough, doesn't it? Just beep, 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 beep. 
you're like, fuck, okay, find the fucking room. God damn. It's like, Tired you're so, of listening. You're, you're so, your sociopathic tendencies can only take me so far. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's driving you nuts, but it is me. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. Uh, that another rousing edition of the hot box. Um, You're free was... to go. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, mm-hmm. Jake, any final thoughts on No Country for Old Men? I know you love this film. I re- I really really do. Um, I like the like I said, kind of neo western, um, kind of smart ass nature of it, mm-hmm. mixed with you know old school. Um, you know, the, the good old boy kind of sheriff, yeah. you know, lone gun. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, I like the dichotomy of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, it just goes together. Um, what I ended up thinking was, <clears throat> I think it's very well put together whenever he visits cousin Ellis. Yes. The old man in the wheelchair. Yes. Um, and goes through that and explains that he's retiring. Um, I, I think it really comes together when Ellis tells him, what you got ain't nothing new. This country's hard on people. Mm-hmm. You can't stop what's coming. It ain't all waiting on you. Yeah, and he That's told a, vanity. And, yeah, and he told a story about a guy being shot on his porch in 1908. The cold bloodedness of that. So, I mean. Yeah. yeah. 19... 19- Zero nine. Oh, zero nine. Yes, yeah. I and think the, so. The way everybody talks in this movie is just great. I just love how. Everybody oh yeah. Talks. I mean, um, yeah. But yeah, I. I mean, I just like. Uh, I. There's something I can appreciate about that, almost nihilistic, anticlimactic. Just it is what it is. It ain't pretty. It ain't nice. There it was. That yep. it, it's just what it, it was, was something that happened yep. and and uh something i uh thought about uh tommy lee, lee jones's character what especially in that scene with uh ellis is you don't have to you don't have to do anything wrong to have a guilty conscience mm-hmm. yeah you can you, you can, can you can just be around it. You can, try you can just see it. Yep. Just just that loss of innocence after so many years of witnessing violence and eventually not being able to understand it. And he tells them, I feel outmatched. Yeah. Yeah. And I I don't know. There's something I, I think well, that, that you, seems... you, you, you I, I'm sure, you know, but there's something I can appreciate about appreciate about that resignation of like i'm not cut out for this shit anymore. yeah absolutely and the, i think it's really interesting also that scene specifically because he's like well i don't really understand it and he's yeah. with his uncle ellis who is surrounded by you know 30 cats or whatever <laughs> doesn't understand that either and several the one, and the one pot of coffee a week like yeah nothing, it's like that's not that's not the way he lives but it's the way Ellis lives and Ellis is fine. Like it's it just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it has to be right. understandable. Yeah, and I, yeah. I I agree. I do like the nihilistic aspect to it. So what yeah. is your what is your overall rating? Awesome. <laughs> um, great. I love it. There's I I have very little negative. It it so perfectly captures that part of the country yes that if if nothing else it does a wonderful job at that it's well acted i have i have nothing but good shit to say about it i'm i'm uh, i think it's a masterpiece five out of 5.0 after 5.0 um it's oh yeah uh one of my top 20 movies ever um it's, it's one of, it's it's uh top five best picture winner ever um I, real quickly i want to mention yeah. the uh, the all-time uh top five best picture uh, the incredible lineup for the 2007 best picture oscars um no country for Old men wins 
Um, other nominees, uh, Atonement. I'm not sure if you've ever seen it. Um, it's a it's a World War II romance, but it's a it's a, it involves around the Dunkirk invasion too. Really good, really well done. Uh, hmm. The the uh, pregnancy comedy Juno. Oh. Uh, hit or miss. Some 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 don't like it. I get it. Uh, Michael Clayton, uh, George Clooney's best performance. Uh, he's a uh, he's a fixer for a uh, for a lawyer. Exceptional movie if you ever get the chance. Michael Clayton. Michael Clayton. Yes. Uh, and then a movie, and then another movie we will eventually definitely do on this podcast. There will be blood. Hell yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, man, that's a that's another banger. I mean, that's right in there. And also filmed at the same place at the same time. So I mean, they were also filming and, in Marfa. And you said Marfa. Yeah, yeah. In Marfa. So I mean. Uh, yeah. Um, I was in Marfa not long ago, and uh, yeah, I'm going down by San Antonio tomorrow. So uh, Javier Bardem got nominated and won Best Supporting Actor. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones did not get nominated, but he was nominated for Best Actor that year for the movie In the Valley of Elah, uh, about a man uh, searching for the truth about the death of his uh, soldier's son. Um, hmm. Good a good film if you ever get the chance. Uh, nothing, for, uh, nothing for Josh Brolin, uh, but he did get nominated the next year for the movie Milk. So uh, uh, all, all well uh, awarded across. Well, think, he gets a thumb up from my wife. <laughs> uh, I, 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 she said he's hot. <laughs> the, so the, the long, the 1980s, long... my wife back then. I mean, yeah, the, in the, that, you the, know, drinking the, beer next to a pool and getting shot up by the cartel. In the actual 1980s, he was in the Goonies. But regardless, uh, <laughs> that was his that was his debut film. So I think that just about does it for this episode of the Film Critic of the Common Man. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Neb is Ben at Letterbox is Neb810 on Instagram at Ben Miller Movies. Check out my website, icecreamforfreaks.com. You can follow my other writing at the Film Experience and Cinema Scholars. You can find me on other pods. I'm known as the David Thulis of Podcasting, which I will have to explain to Jake after we get off this podcast. Jake, where can the people find you? Can't. No? You're just out, 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 in, the, out in the backwoods trying to aim up those antelopes? Uh, yeah, pretty much. If Hey. If you can find me, you're, you're not going to like it. <laughs> Make sure to follow the podcast. Nah, on Twitter. Really. <laughs> Make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at Critic Common Pod. Please like, subscribe, rate, review. Podcast is available anywhere you can find your podcast. We will catch you next time. We will try to do a movie that is a little happier, but maybe. Yeah. Not. Who knows? Yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for being here, guys. See y'all. Making my love stick. What's the trick? <laughs>